Well, hi, and thanks for joining me for making fanfare today. This is the piece that I cut off the bottom of the flower from last week's tutorial. And I thought it looked like a spider the second I cut it off. And since it is spooky season, we're making it a spider. Right here, I'm just testing just to decide which canvas I want to put this spider on. Um, I feel like it's kind of big for the, for the little canvas. So I'm going to go with this bigger canvas. It's 14 inches by 20 inches. And I actually do like that one leg is uh, longer than the other, so we're gonna play that up. Okay, I'm picking out fabric. I want the spider to stand off. I don't want the background to be the focal, so I choose the yellow just because it makes the spider stand out. And these are my little rotary cutters. I've got a big one and a little one. And of course, my cute little uh, friend sewing with me. My initial thought here was to make a spider web with the background out of this kind of gradiated um, white gray color. And I'm starting, my initial thought was to mimic some of the American traditional tattoos where they'll um, make a spider web and they fade it. Almost like a watercolor which tattooing is very much like watercoloring. That's kind of how you practice to, to become a great tattoo artist. But I'm playing around with these. I'm, I, I'm just not feeling it. So let's try a different take. I'm gonna move these little webs around. I think what I don't like about this probably the most is how thick they are. So I, I try again here, here we go. We're gonna cut up some little pieces, some really thin ones. Like this is gonna be the web. It is better. I have to give it that. But ultimately, I uh, decided to scrap that idea and focus on making my spider because I, I was that black fabric over there. I was going to cut that up and make another web. But I thought before I waste all this fabric, why don't I just finish out my spider and see how see how the spider ends up? Is my spider a girl? Is it a boy? I just haven't decided yet. It hasn't spoken to me. But just from looking at these colors, I think, yes, I do want to add something to the back of this spider. So uh, here's a little tip I'll give you. I do find that when ironing my adhesive to the backs of my fabrics, I do it the whole thing at, at once. So I'll um, treat the fabric and then I iron on the double-sided adhesive. But when I when you do that, the double-sided adhesive comes on this like wax paper. Or not wax paper. Um, anyways, it comes on some kind of paper. Non-stick paper. Well, when you iron it on that paper, shrinks ever so slightly, which causes the fabric that you put it on to ripple. Uh, and I'm not about that ripple ripple. So I deply my double-sided adhesive off of that paper. Okay, then I iron the paper so it shrinks. Then I'll put the paper over the fabric that I wanna use and iron my adhesive to the back. Occasionally, it doesn't adhere well. So that's what you saw there um, was just me reapplying that adhesive because the adhesive doesn't just go away. It, it will always be there. And I just, sometimes you have to re-adhere it. So I'm working on, our, on their little legs right now. When I saw these two really long pieces, I thought that kind of looks like a jumping spider. Let's play on that for a minute and see what we can make our little jumping spider do. See what kind of personality we can give it. And I assume jumping spiders make webs, but I'm not like 100% sure.
And here we go. We're just going to wing this back. I like the way this pink looks behind this purple. I'm going to measure here and just cut a shape and we'll see what happens. After all, that is how we ended up with this spider body. So um, it's not a terrible method. I used to be a very meticulous quilter and drafted everything out in Procreate before I ever cut fabric. Because heaven forbid you waste a fat quarter of fabric. It just feels like sinning. <laughs> it hurts my heart. But in this instance, uh, all those little extra pieces of fabric make their own little pieces of art. So what I did here. I already glued the back to those legs, unfortunately, and cannot make this pink part go behind the back and that back set of legs. So it's got to go now. It has to fade into the, the current back before it gets to those back legs. So it's instances like that where planning ahead would be useful. But we're going to make this happen. It's happening. You cut that fabric. Bust open that fat quarter bundle. I have more just fat quarter bundles than I know what to do with. Because they're easy to buy. They're already cut. I can get the whole collection. I don't have to bother nobody at the quilt shop. Be like, hey, I would like these 28, uh, <laughs> these 28 fabrics cut into fat quarters. Which, if you're not a quilter, a fat quarter... Okay, so fabric is sold by the yard, which is 36 inches. Um, plus, there is a width of the fabric. It ranges depending on the company, but it's like 42 to 44 inches. I think I've even had some 46. I, I guess that just depends on the manufacturer. And what a fat quarter is... Well, it's sold by the yard. So, a quarter of fabric is a quarter of 36 inches. So, a half is 18 inches... And half of that is nine. Well, instead of giving you nine inches by the whole length of, or the width of the fabric, uh, quilt stores, they'll double that and do half the width. So it's um, 18 inches by, say, 20 or 22 inches. Whatever half the width of fabric is. So there's there that's what a fat quarter is. And now it's time we're going to decorate uh, this little guy's back. We have decided that he is a peacock jumping spider. And they have these little, like, eyes on the back of their little abdomen flaps. They use them, from what I have read, to attract mates. Um, but I, I can't imagine, like, that that's its only use. I would assume that it would use that for um, scaring predators. Because they look like they've got little eyes on their backs. But I'm just going to let y'all sit here and watch this process. You can see I've got my my palette in my hand. That's a, it's, a, it's a, like a painter's palette, only it's full of fabric. I like the way that this blue looks on that purple abdomen flap, um, but I didn't have enough pieces. So right now I'm just creating scraps, cutting. Um, by folding the fabric, I'm definitely going to get two of the same shape. I did not start by folding the fabric when I first started making these like postmodern um, art pieces, but I do like having two of, of something it for symmetry i should probably go back to not doing that 
because it makes things a little less symmetrical. And a asymmetry is fun. There's interest in it. Um, but I guess to go around these these edges now, I did not anticipate these blues being kind of like these fringe pieces or these little hairs. Um, but they worked fantastic. So I just glued them down. I'd already decided. And this particular jumping spider is native to um, Australia. But I don't think it can kill you. But, I, I mean... I probably wouldn't try to pet one either, so. This spider will definitely not kill you. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna set him on the board again and see how he looks on the canvas. Um, I've, I've completely given up the web idea at this point and I'm gonna cut a leaf for him to dance on uh, because he's clearly showing off for someone. Is it you? Maybe but he does need a little perch. And I thought maybe I could tuck his little legs into a leaf. That'd be fun. And I'm using my typical cut and flip to get that um, dimension. Sometimes I'll use different colors, um, but for this one I choose to use the same color just flipped. And quite frankly, I've gone through this fabric a lot quicker than I expected. I started with one fat quarter bundle that I had already taken some cuttings out of for some actual, like, tufted, um, tufted, <laughs> like it's furniture, actual quilted quilts, uh, flat quilts, um, and I glued those down, and now I'm on my second bundle of fat quarters, and I think they're like $150 a, a bundle, um, but I'll tell you what, color's expensive. Supplies are expensive. You can get uh, discounts on canvas if you order it in bulk. I have chosen to do that. Unfortunately, now I'm stuck with this size canvas. So I've got the 12 by 12s and the 14 by 20s, and I chose the 14 by 20s because I can wrap the canvas in a fat quarter of fabric. Whereas there's another one that I think says 16 by 24 and the fabric is not big enough to wrap it, uh, a fat quarter. Now I can buy yardage. The stores around here don't carry all the colors. So that's the hardest thing about going to a quilt store or a quilt shop is, I mean, they're just trying to buy what sells. And if these ombres aren't selling, I get it. Don't keep it in stock. But when I go, I'm, I'm going for like a specific color with these ombres. And I usually just have to order it online. I still try to order from um, a local, or not local, but like a small business. Um, Amazon sells fabric, quilt fabric. Uh, I, I try not to use them unless I just cannot find the fabric anywhere else. Okay, here's another tip. I'm not... No, I'll just go ahead and tell you. So, what I did there, to get this leaf to stick together, I overlap it by a quarter of an inch when I'm ironing it down. To get that quarter of an inch, I just scoot the fabric down a quarter of an inch and then follow that seam, that line. So now I've got my seam allowance for it to adhere together and I didn't have to like do any marking, no math was involved. I just scooted that front leaf down and cut it off. I'm picking a, a background here. Initially I was going with that yellow, but it just didn't work out. Now I tried out a bunch of fabrics, but I just did, I couldn't imagine you wanting to sit and watch all that. So I, I edited it out.
I take choosing the background very, very seriously. And I'm going through in my head these three options, the yellow, the blue, or the purple. So let me tell you what I don't like about the yellow. The yellow is so bright that it, it is its focal point all on its own. And I don't think the background should take away from uh, my foreground or my spider in this case, or the leaves or the flowers. And I just I feel like that yellow is competing but I will say I do like the way that the spider pops off of that yellow background. But I, I do ultimately choose this blue because it's a more subtle color. And even though you do lose some of that color contrast from the yellow, I think that it matches this theme better. So that is why I went with the blue. And now I'm just going to measure this up to make sure that once it's folded around the canvas that we're not going to lose the end of the leaf. Because I have had that happen before. And it will slap ruin a piece. I think this leaf would have been fun too to cut it, to cut it instead of across all the colors, like in the same direction. That way it would have faded from dark to light. Um up and down versus side to side. Maybe I should tuck him in more. I just, I hate to lose, I hate losing any detail. And that's the hard part about just deciding where these things are going to be placed. It is honestly time though to stop fiddling with this, in my opinion, and just get this baby ironed down. I'm gonna tack it down. I, I'm not even done with the spider yet. Like, he doesn't even have cute little googly eyes or anything. But I do wanna go ahead and get it tacked. Tactastic. I'm trying uh, several different eyes here. The thing that creeped me out about spiders the most are probably all the eyes. Like, I really, I just want two eyes. You know, like, one body, two eyes, one mouth. But here I'm trying out a different little head. Because they've got, like, floofy little boop heads. This is right precious, but it does need a little something-something. It's just not... Spark into life like it should. But I'll bet we can fix that. Well, since you're hanging in there with me and watching this video, would you like another tip? Another Tip Tuesday? Well, I do treat all of my fabric before I add the adhesive to prevent fraying. So how do I treat my fabric? I treat my fabric with a mixture of Mod Podge, Mod Podge and water. And I mix that in a spray bottle and then I just spray the bejesus out of this fabric. I don't use a paintbrush to paint it on. I just spray it and let it dry. I cover my um, work table here. It's very large. I just cover it with wax paper, spray it, turn on the fan, and then just wait. Wait a day. 
and I would say my ratio, let me see, my bottle is somewhere in the studio here, I don't know where. Um, it's one of those utilit utilitarian spray bottles, so it's quite large, and I'll do, I'll fill it full of water, and then I add the Mod Podge. <sighs> God, I'd say maybe a quarter cup. I don't know, let me go get it. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Thanks. Thanks for hanging in there with me. So it's a 25 ounce spray bottle. And I would say I use about two and a half ounces of Mod, mod Podge to 25 ounces of water. And then I don't have to worry about fraying. Okay, well, sometimes I do. But it's a lot less likely to fray. And thanks for hanging in there with me. It absolutely kills me how cute that little face is. But I want to cut more eyes for his little abdomen flap. So I'm just like free cutting here. I probably should have used a template, but I'm tired. This has taken way longer than I expected. My last uh, video took me like, I don't know, an hour to make that flower. I guess because I'm just so comfortable with it. But this one took me a lot longer. Um, now, this little thing I've got here in my hands, it is a hole punch that punches in different sizes. I picked it up from, you know, the big box store that sells crafty goodness. And it comes in all different sizes. So, it's got a 1 16th inch, which is, I mean, my gosh, that's like just a thread. An 8th inch, 3 16 a quarter, and 5 16 I did have a problem with it like fraying on the edges so I might would recommend either double spraying fabric that you plan to use the hole punch on possibly even uh, it, here I found that using paper behind it helped separate the cut and it turned out all right I chose these yellow irises because I think in nature, when things try to mimic eyes, they choose gold like a hawk. Because hawks have gold eyes. Hawks and owls? Don't owls have yellow eyes? Predators have yellow eyes, I guess. Too bad that doesn't work with, you know, like people. And be like, oh, no, no, thank you. I'm good. I don't want to take that survey. You've got yellow eyes. <laughs> You predator. <laughs> And here we go again, cutting out sockets for these eyes. Now 
No template, just winging this. I am pretty happy with the way this jumping spider is turning out. It was very foreign to me to make an animal, um, but that little extra piece that we had, just it just had to be turned into a spider. Now I'm deciding, do I want to give it eyebrows? I like that one. That one's good. Maybe I should have put that on there. Spoiler alert, I didn't. <laughs> I could go back and do it though. That's the fun thing about these. I mean, you can just keep adding, you can just keep adding stuff to it. Now at this point, the purple, the dark purple starting to look like a mouth to me, especially with those gold eyes up there. So I'm trying to figure out a way here to make it look less uh, open mouthy. I don't know, like a shark. Testing out different colors. I'm gonna try that hole punch again. I'm struggling with that. I think it'd be super fun to like line up the uh, cricket and just let the cricket make a bunch of hole punches. But gosh, just getting that thing out. Ugh, like I got time. <laughs> and you gotta be careful once you get that backing on there to remember which side has the backing. And on the darker fabrics, it's easy because the backing side is light. But on these lighter colors, whew, I tell you what, that white that I used on the eyes, I got one piece turned around so much that I, did, I didn't know. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. So I stuck it under the iron and thought, well, it'll either stick to the mat or it'll stick to the iron. And luckily it did stick to the mat, so I could still use it. If you ever touch that adhesive with your iron, the adhesive, it, it's gone. You're just going to have to re-adhesive it. That's a cute little extra piece. So here, what, here's what I'm doing there. I'm taking photos of the different back layouts and then I can flip through them real easy on my cell phone. I do the same when trying on clothes too. I'll take pictures of my outfits and then after I get done trying everything on, I'll flip through my camera and decide which ones really worked on my body and which ones didn't. Sometimes none of them work, and which is good because then it, that's a cheap trip for me. But then sometimes they all work, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> now, I do think that doing these these little, like, it's kind of like this really limey, greeny color for, for those little stripes. It makes it look less like a mouth, in my personal opinion. So we're going to get this, uh, I also didn't have enough pieces here, so I'm kind of doing a split thing to give the illusion that it actually connects when it doesn't. And we're done! Yay! This is supposedly, yeah, we're done. Yeah, for sure. Done. So I'm putting it under the iron. Ten seconds. And here we go. Yay! Now let me show you what it's going to look like on the canvas. Ta-da! Mr. Fanfare. <laughs> 